Howdy all of you delicious people. I'm here today to review a movie called Wolf. This is a 2021 film that right now I think it's like it has some like premium access stuff where you can like pay $20 or whatever but I'm going to give you a convenient app that you can dare in fact go on to so you can watch this movie for absolutely free. Uh, that's not the main reason of which that I'm doing this review. I just conveniently had saw this film and I want to just suggest for people to go ahead and, uh, if not check out this movie, then check out another batch of new releases for absolutely free with kind of ads placed in somewhere in the film. So you can go on to, of course, a Google Play Store uh, search and go into the words movie apps and there, in fact, there will be scrolling down, you'll eventually find an app called Play HD TV, which I hope is still there. If not, then there's also other apps that I've used through a plethora of time here that I could also recommend for people to find. You could also go onto a Google search and thereby going into an app called Letter C Movie. So it's a letter and a word. And... Once you search that movie app, you can dare in fact download that app and dare in fact with a combination of both these ads, you should be able to basically see almost anything. There might be a random uh, Google Play Store uh, app called like TV Crush that could be like a buffer if there's like those two apps just doesn't have every single thing in your uh, in your way of, of watching, then you can go on to TV Crush and that might conveniently have something there. Sometimes that app conveniently has uh, uh, shows or movies that actually are to be subtitled where maybe uh, some of this other stuff doesn't. So there's that for you. So, Wolf. What is Wolf about? So... I went on to see this movie and immediately while watching this film, it kind of triggered into my brain uh, for this to feel similar to the Colin Farrell movie, The Lobster, where Colin Farrell was, of course, to lose his lover and forcibly needed to go to this, uh, like, I guess, like a clinic or a place, a retreat of sorts to go on and find another mate or otherwise after x amount of time he was to be forced to eventually become a animal that is to be of course of his choosing and colin is to suggest that he wants to become a lobster if he can't find anybody within x amount of time saying that like Normally dogs are the, the kind of common thing that everybody suggests or wants and, and whatever. And so... And Colin, I guess, his brother who changed to an animal, Colin is just taking care of. Uh, or the character Colin. So... When I went into this movie, like, I started to, like, feel like... Like somewhat similar to that situation but this is much more of a mental health kind of thing but we eventually start to slowly but surely have this therapist who is to be called the zookeeper here it seems that this character is to go on and start to go through some brutal ways to teach these kids to become more human and like the zookeeper is to almost go into a way of which of turning these uh characters into animals uh or basically treating these uh characters like animals so that way they can go and revert back to their human form i guess at some point but we just continue to have at some point where we're like whoa <laughs> like they're going a little too far here or this seems like brutal what they're going on and enforcing these characters to do 
and it's kind of humiliating or it's just like mocking them at some points or going on and and uh, just pushing them to extreme measures to almost hurt or injure themselves to go on and force them to realize that they are human and they can't do exactly what a normal animal would be able to do but these people are to be so stubborn that they are to still want to continue to be their spirit animal at some point they are to say here and so we go on and we have through this film we have a cluster of certain people who are to become different animals it all isn't like the same animal it's we don't have like a wolf specialist and a and a squirrel specialist and a and a german shepherd specialist and whatever no like we just have one therapist who is to basically dominate over these characters and like treat all of them like the exact same way like have them write out why they think that they are to possibly be having burdens of being a human and kind of use that against them to eventually say that it's like well when you get on all fours you can't walk like a normal wolf can and uh like your neck is just so cumbersome to deal with all that and so on and so forth and we have these things kind of used against these people because it's like oh well you wrote this like you wrote that you um that like your neck is such a burden to deal with when you're having to move on all fours and so on and so forth that you have to kind of bob up and down your neck oh what a what a burden like oh well it's <laughs> yeah. yeah it's like the interesting things about this story but also the brutality of it is just like wow and so there's some kind of like back and forth thing about this and a lot of people could have naturally assumed that this was eventually going to be like a uh like a werewolf movie or some people would have assumed that it was any kind of number of things that wasn't exactly what this was but yeah um so it's like i didn't go out of my way to like i wasn't laughing through this film i wasn't like seeing this movie as a big massive joke because there's people that are to have kind of lost their way and eventually think that they are to be any number of things besides who they actually are and so that's kind of where i saw it as so with that said like i like my grading system would have to be like kind of different for this movie because how can i grade a uh like a mental like mental thing how could i how could i say that this is a dreadful movie or an awful film when there are certain people out there that kind of deal with this condition that like this is kind of like this is to be making me off to be a uh, a, a monster myself or an animal myself if i'm to go and uh critique this movie and say like oh what an awful film what like there is stuff about it that I didn't like, I'll admit that. Um, but, like, I'm not going to go into, like, saying, like, oh, boo with this movie, 100% boo. And uh, I'm not going to go on and say that this is a great film either. Um, because also there is those, like, kind of very dark uh, parts of this film. So, like, but I'm, so I'm, like, really conflicted about, like, basically saying i'm not gonna grade this movie <laughs> i don't feel like i should grade this movie um but i felt like i've said enough about it so with that said let's just go into that double five because it's otherwise time again to go into spoilers the way of which that i'm probably gonna review this one is to really just go on and talk about pieces of the film 
and it'll probably not be in the perfect form of the film, but uh, close enough. Um, I'm just kind of like uh, go through some parts of this. So the thing about this film is we don't actually have names for most of these characters, especially on IMDb, because most of the names are to really just be what animal most people were. Uh, and very few people even have the name, like the doctor just has like the zookeeper for a name in here. So I guess we're legitimately like not having much for names here. It's kind of interesting to also have Lily Rose Depp here. So it's Johnny Depp's daughter that's kind of being put into this film. And I was like, oh, wow, that's kind of cool. Um, like I had seen like yoga hosers at one point, so... Like, it was kind of interesting seeing Depp here. So, with that said, let's just go into spoilers of this film. So, we have, of course, Jacob, who is to imagine himself a wolf. So, we go on and we have Jacob, who is really fighting the fact of being a wolf, trying to be much more human. But slowly but surely... We have Jacob starting to become more and more throughout this film, more animalistic and eventually getting to the point where it's getting to where there is almost no hope for this character. Jacob at one point is going on and talking to his parents and his parents are to go on and like, well, hey, how's it, do how's it going? Like, how are things? Like, uh, like your brother, um, your brother misses you and, and so on and so forth. So we have one point where Jacob's mother is saying, it's like, well, like, don't you want to be normal? Don't you want to have a job? Like, don't you want to have all these things? And like, in my mind, when I kind of heard some of this stuff, like from Jacob's mother is like, well, like there's possibly some of that stuff there that, like, isn't going to make someone happy. <laughs> but, uh, so you could probably get into any number of those things and then probably have this condition possibly manifest again uh, for whatever reason, for stress or, or whatever. And probably that's when we eventually get certain characters who are to eventually say in this film that they are to get cured to come back X amount of time later. So, so yeah, so pushing on. So Jacob is, of course, to uh, kind of go on and uh, kind of go into this group meeting where he is to meet certain people. And so we, of course, have the one kid who is to mention that he is a German Shepherd and that it seems like uh, eventually this German Shepherd character is do better and better and better uh, to the point of eventually at some point in this movie, him getting a release. Uh, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. So We have Jacob that is to meet up with this German shepherd. And he, of course, is to say, it's like, well, hey, man, like, uh, like, let's be like, let's be in a pack because like, I like I'm known for like being in a pack. And so like, so are you considering your animal is kind of like a, uh, a pack kind of like, so like, yeah, let's, let's be in a pack. I'm like, when did German, when did, when did dogs like really go together in a pack? Like, I don't really know about that, but like, okay, I guess, like, I guess there's some science behind it. So we, so we go on and like Jacob wants nothing to do with this German shepherd, but it seems that eventually we have one day where this girl who is just to be called Wildcat is going and retrieving Jacob's tray from him. And like slowly and surely, uh, Jacob starts to eventually meet with this Wildcat girl while uh, opening this window and howling outside. And this girl is to be this Wildcat and she's basically like making her way kind of like freaking hissing at Jacob and eventually scratching 
Jacob and telling him, well, like, this is my turf, get out of here, or we're going to get caught. So, while Kat and Jacob go off uh, and, like, get out of the, the clinic to go outside for Jacob to howl um, at the night there, and so... We have Wildcat who's asking Jacob, it's like, well, better? And he's like, better. So Jacob is very often in this film kind of shirtless because, like, uh, I guess when you really have it, like, with these characters just being animals, I guess a lot of times you would just have these characters not want clothing because, or, like, some of them, like, wanting to go on and dress in their animal selves at some point or cosplay or whichever. Like we have the one time where the German shepherd, when he leaves here and comes back, he comes back with this like dog, like costume. Or we have one point where the squirrel, the guy that believes he's a squirrel is to go on and have this like squirrel, like tail and kind of just mm, going around trying to be a squirrel. So we go on in this movie and we have the zookeeper that is trying to break uh, certain people, certain characters. So we have the zookeeper that goes in and has the, 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 the boy that wants to be a squirrel. The zookeeper is pushing this guy th with a leash. The freaking leash. Like we're leashing these humans. And so the zookeeper is to take this squirrel boy on this leash and is telling him to try and climb up this tree. And so we have this boy that's trying to climb up this tree, just like a normal way of climbing. And so the zookeeper is like, no, you're not doing it right. Like you're a squirrel, right? Like you have to climb using your claws and you have to climb up using and... So this kid, like, continues to do this, and then freaking nail comes off. And I'm like, oh, my God, that is so awful. Oh, my God. So this kid ends up getting hurt doing this, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is something I didn't want to see. Because uh, I was, like, uh, I had just gotten, like, up, and I was, like, eating uh, some kind of Christmas meal. Because it's Christmas, everybody. Uh, delay of Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. So, we have this squirrel boy who is to, of course, be hurt. And later on, we have his mother going to this zookeeper and telling him, it's like, well, like, man, your teachings are kind of brutal. And the zookeeper is just like, well, I'm, I'm, te I'm curing them. Like, there has to be some kind of give and take for this to eventually, like make them realize that they are to be a human and not an ant. So there has to be some extreme measures to teach them, to, to help them learn. So and we have the zookeeper that's also taking now the wolf. And he's like, well, like, go ahead. Like, howl. Like, you're a wolf, right? Howl. And so the kid goes on and doesn't want to do it and, like, tries to restrain himself. And... So the zookeeper is like, see that, guys? Like, he restrained himself. Like, wow. Nice. Yeah. Like, <laughs> maybe he'll, like, get cured sooner or later. But then eventually he just keeps being much more of an animal, uh, like, in the middle of the night. Eventually going on to being more animalistic uh, more and more. So... We eventually have certain other characters that come to the fold here. We have one girl who is, of course, to be a parrot, and she starts to repeat everything. And so we have this girl who's to be this parrot, and she's wearing this, like, parrot-like costume, and she's kind of flapping her wings at some point in time. She's going on and, and trying to perform this role, and so we have the one awful scene where the zookeeper is taking this girl and almost chucking her out this window. 
Like, there's a guy behind her. It's not the zookeeper. The zookeeper is, like, down where she's going to drop. And the zookeeper's like, come on! Like, fly! You're a bird, right? Like, basically, we're going to chuck you out this window. And hopefully you don't fall on me. Because I'll just let you fall to your death or get freaking injured. But hey, like... Come on, just fly away because you're a bird, right? And so the girl is to just kind of flap her wings and this guy is pushing her out this window and she's like, no, I'm a human, I'm a human, I'm a human. And he's like, man, we finally have a breakthrough with this with this girl. Yeah, like, like you can't fly, so shut the F up and stop repeating people <laughs> kind of thing, like... But this girl just keeps on, like, repeating people. And so we go on and we have, of course, Jacob and Wildcat consistently sneaking away at night and going off and... They're just kind of being much more animal next to one another. We have uh, eventually them just kind of being an animal to one another. And so eventually Jacob is to kind of push Wildcat far too uh, much to where she is to desperately just pull back and just say, stop, stop. Because it seems like Jacob is being too aggressive here. And so... Jacob starts on all fours just kind of walking off. So we have Jacob go on and he's playing this mobile game where he's going and shooting all these deers. And we have this one girl who, of course, is to be called uh, Annalisa, who's saying like, hey, you just scored 100 points. And... So they're trying to figure out why they're forcing, like, them to, like, play mobile games. And really they come to the consensus of it just being that they want them to be doing a human thing, which I guess a mobile game is something like that. Like, hand-eye coordination is, I guess, to be kind of uh, put through here. So we have these people going through and doing what a normal human would do through this therapy session where a girl is teaching all of these, uh, these people to like basically either draw what they are to look like as an animal or uh, like find a photo or something like that of them. And so we start to have all these kind of things on the board seeing like which animal these characters are and so on and so forth. So we have this teacher, well, teacher is a, this therapist going on and, and training these people how to laugh, how to giggle, how to, uh, eventually dance, how to, like, remember how it is to be more human. And we had the zookeeper coming in, like, going and having these people write down how cumbersome it is to be a human because it hinders their animal side. And so... The zookeeper is to try to tell these people, it's like, well, hey, like, I can, like, I can easily have you, like, go and be who you say that you are. Like, we have, uh, we have Annalisa, who's to say that she's a panda, and so the zookeeper is like, well, hey, like, I can go and give you bamboo to just chew on and see how well that works for you, <laughs> and we have... Like the zookeeper who's going on and like kind of seeing what all these people have wrote and written down about how cumbersome and like dealing with the neck and dealing with not being able to easily walk on all fours and 
and all of these things. So we, again, we don't really focus on like, what was the trauma to cause this animal thing? Maybe these people were to have gotten beaten up by uh, their parents, or maybe like they were to be troubled children, but they never dissect that. They just try to beat the the animal part out of them, and that's really all they do here. There's no like trying to figure out the trauma or try to figure out the one point to reverse all this. No, it's just like, hey, like you're an animal, and we're gonna try to beat it out of you, and that's basically what they do. That's, um, that's basically the, the part we get in this film. So both Wildcat and both Jacob are going again, sneaking out at night. And so we have Wildcat mentioning that the very first, or the memory, the only memory she really has, cause she's kind of been here forever and Jacob had thought that she had worked here and Wildcat is just, no, like I've just been here for a long time. And so Wildcat is mentioning the first memory that she was to have was her having these like drops of water consistently coming into her room. And so Wildcat was consistently uh, counting the drops as supposedly her father would come into her room and possibly, like, hurt her, I'm assuming? Like, maybe that's where the trauma came from, from this character, to eventually become this animal. Uh, maybe there is a there is a story behind that, but there's not much of a story for any number of these characters. So, Jacob was to mention that he was on some, uh, was in some national park, and all of a sudden, he was to go on and hear some sound, and Jacob was running after it. Going on and finding out that there was to be some wolf there, and Jacob had looked into this wolf's eyes and realized that he was this wolf's son. For some odd reason, there was this weird uh, animal connection there that just uh, seemed um, to just click. So we further go on and we have Jacob becoming more and more animalistic in this movie to the point of Jacob having this one, this one animal kind of bullying other animals. I think he was a bear. We had this one kid going and bullying this duck, this duck, and he's kind of just uh, smacking him around and like hovering over him. And so Jacob one day finally goes after this bear and he like kind of takes him off the duck and starts like growling at him. And so these people were to go and take Jacob and say like, hey, we don't tolerate violence here. And I'm just like, wait a minute. So you can tolerate this bear kind of bullying people and smacking them around and whatever and treating them bad. But like you can't tolerate, <laughs> you can't tolerate Jacob like defending somebody, obviously. Like, no, they just see it as, like, well, this guy was being violent to this other... But, like, he wasn't really even much of doing anything. He was doing almost the exact same thing that this bear guy was, but he didn't get punished for it. So... But they go on and they tell Jacob, because I guess he's the main character here, and this bear guy they didn't give a sh about because he's not the main character. They're saying, like, well... Like, we can go into extreme measures to deal with you, Jacob. And so, eventually, that's where they head into doing. Uh, eventually, somewhere in this film. So, but we have the German Shepherd who is to supposedly be cured of his, uh, of his illness. 
And so he's going on and telling the group while Jacob and everybody is still there. It's like, well, hey, guys, like I, I'm basically cured. You can tell by the star that's on my coat that I'm like, I'm good now. And my mom's going to pick me up and we're going to go to a holiday. And and the therapist is just like, well, it's not really a holiday. And it's like, it's like, well, whatever. Like, we're going to go on a vacation. And <laughs> so... The German Shepherd is now supposedly cured as well as a number of other people, coincidentally. There's this one kid who is to have been a bear. There is one girl that is to be another animal that I couldn't quite have seen because it kind of happens kind of quickly. We have all these people who are cured and everybody's kind of clapping on as they're leaving. So... We all of a sudden have Wildcat who is just kind of frustrated because she's like, well, why can't I leave? And so she goes on and uh, in, uh, goes, into this, some, go in, goes into this one room and is to just like have this kind of uh, hissy fit of sorts. And so this therapist goes in there and it's like, well, like you do this every single time someone is to get released here. It's like you have to eventually like you have to make much more strides to become better or you're never going to leave here. So we now have Jacob that can't let go of his animal side to the point of him almost going on and attacking the zookeeper at one point. And so now like the zookeeper is showing Jacob the worst case scenario where there was to be one guy who had been in this environment where he had to go and eat people and and this guy had turned into a lion afterwards after this traumatic experience and basically the person who is to have this man be taken here basically was like just kind of like leave him in here forever like just kind of like leave him here because this guy there's no turning back for this guy so this guy who was to be now a lion is in this cage and he is to be purely an animal and that's all of course he is to know so jacob is to be chucked into this chain and or chucked in this chain this well chains technically but he's caged up chained up and they are to go on and taser him at some points just kind of uh cattle prodding him uh like forcing him i guess to break out of this habit and hoping they can like i guess still beat the animal out of him i guess <laughs> so i guess there's nothing else for them to really do here so Wildcat eventually is to go on and like put makeup on her face, um, uh, a certain kind of makeup that is to make her look more like a cat. And she goes on and is to see Jacob in this cage. And so Wildcat is to go on and take off all of her clothes and is to go on and really just say here that she is to really be falling for Jacob and going on in, in one way or another trying to please him by having this girl like like have Jacob look at her as she is now without clothes so we go on to the very next day and they're just kind of lying next to one another on this cage and one of the therapists to wake up and like, oh my God. And so we have this one uh, nurse who's going and taking and putting these clothes back on this wildcat. And so Jacob is, is going on and talking about escaping at some point in the middle of the night. Um, and so... Eventually, what does happen is we have a scene where the German Shepherd is to come back. And 
he's coming back on this leash and this dog-like costume. And the German Shepherd is to go and lift his leg and pee onto the ground. And so the zookeeper and these therapists are coming back and they're like, oh, hey, yeah, like, uh, like this guy, like I thought he was cured, but I guess no, like, oh, well, like, uh, and so like we have the German Shepherd's mom that's like a really apologizing for the fact that like he peed on there like, hey, we'll clean it up. It's no problem. But then as the mother is to go off onto the side, uh, we have the zookeeper that's looking at this German shepherd, the, the boy, and he goes on. He's like, yeah, I guess like, hey, buddy, like, I guess like you couldn't have gotten cured now. And so the zookeeper turns around and shoves this guy's face into his urine and is telling him it's like what did you do as he's shoving his face into his urine his own urine like yeah like just shaming him and humiliating him and just kind of just pushing that into his face and i'm like oh my god this is so awful uh <laughs> this is so awful that like they're going to these extreme measures to just kind of like again like pushing these people to forcibly like break out of this still so we go on and we start to have all of these students now learning how to dance and so we go on and have all these kids starting to learn how to dance but then all of them are starting to revert back to their kind of animal selves because they're just tired of this dancing and they're just kind of tired of having to, of course, uh, go on and do this thing and kind of be forced to do all the stuff that they're forcing them to do. And so we start having them kind of uh, just speaking out here. And so we have the parrot that's kind of just repeating everything that this girl's saying and starting to fly and starting to whatever. And everybody just can't really take it anymore. And so everybody's just reverting back to their animal selves. And we have the one girl that's like saying that, or that is just say that she's a horse. She's like, yeah, she's horse. She's like sounding like a horse. So the zookeeper just comes in and it's just going through and just starting to humiliate every single one of these kids and going on to just become the much more dominant animal, supposedly, out of all of these things. And so we have the zookeeper who's to see the squirrel boy and he's just like, mm -hmm, like pretending that he's a squirrel right in front of him, just uh, like showing him, like, I, I guess how ridiculous he is. And going on and having uh and shouting in front of the horse girl and just being louder and louder and louder than she is and like forcing her to just be quiet and we end up having the the parrot and the zookeeper is kind of like being the the parrot and just consistently like repeating everything that she says and like ah that nah. like so we eventually had the zookeeper that's going on to the German Shepherd and being much more of a dominant, aggressive dog than the German Shepherd guy is. And, like, we just go on and on with this until this, like, zookeeper, I think, is losing his frickin' mind. Uh, I guess he is maybe possibly at some breaking point of just humiliating or ridiculing all these people to force this out of him. But, like, I'm sure he's just sick of all these kids not ha not being cured already so we can get rid of them. <laughs> I don't know, like, this seems horrific. So, we go on and we now, of course, have uh, finally a uh, wildcat in the middle of the, uh, in the middle of the night going on and finding the keys for Jacob's cage. And she is to find some uh like nurse there that is trying to prevent this girl from taking these keys and this girl ends up locking this girl in this room 
And so Wildcat and Jacob are to try to escape here. And Jacob is trying to get the 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 chains away from this one door. And so Jacob instead decides to climb this cage and Wildcat is telling Jacob, it's like, well, like you'll get hurt climbing over this fence. Like it's a barbed wire fence. You're going to get hurt. And so Jacob climbs over it anyways. But before he does, we have Wildcat that's going on and saying like, well, like how about we just like pretend that we're better? How about we just pretend that we're human? How about we just like fake it and... and eventually go on to try to get out of here so then we can be together and then we'll like run off and we'll be fine and jacob is like well then like i won't be able to become my my real self like i won't be able to be my real self and so jacob goes and climbs the fence and is to run off against to be in the wild where how would I write this ending? Because this is basically the ending of this film. Like, I would probably say that Jacob, they eventually find him and cage him up again. And, like, there is no coming back for Jacob. Like, I, I feel at that point, like, there... I don't feel like there is a happy ending to this movie. Uh, like, in my mind. <laughs> Just because, like... They would go after this guy and try to figure out where he is. Like, he would not disappear into the wild. I don't think that's a possibility for this guy. Uh, but yeah, so with that said, I think I've covered most of this movie. There might be some dialogues or there might be some exchanges where I couldn't have been bothered to thoroughly go into. Uh, like, there's certain parts where they're kind of watching, like, National Geographic uh, kind of uh, videos at some point. Uh, just having certain, uh, like, there's this one video of a snake consuming a frog, and the frog is just letting it being consumed as it's, like, breathing its way into death. <laughs> and I'm like, good God. Like, this frog, I guess, isn't even trying to, like, get out of this situation. I guess it's like, well, it's just far too late, or it's not even realizing it's going to die. But yeah, so... Like, we we have that kind of stuff going on, where it's just kind of like animal videos, and, like, trying to, like... Eventually have this repetitive thing, like, of tape to convince this person that he isn't a wolf, he is just a boy. He isn't a wolf, he is just a boy. Like, a repetitive, like, 10-hour thing that's just saying, like, you're not a wolf, you're just a boy. So, figuring out a way, like, you would have thought possibly they would have gone on to, like, normal therapy movies, like electroshock therapy, or some kind of, like, also, like, brutal, like, therapy way of just kind of working this stuff out but because it seems like nothing else is really working and so yeah um i don't know like for anybody that's probably a qualified therapist more than likely they'll go on and say like well yeah with this movie you would probably do this and this and this like i can understand that like there's always that kind of thing where eventually you'd have uh some purpose therapist whatever going on and like oh yeah hey they like somebody did a movie about this and it seems uh pretty inaccurate or it seems to be like the worst uh possible way of treating somebody or maybe it's uh like close to accurate or whatever um but i wouldn't i wouldn't say that like i wouldn't say any of this would be something that i would hope uh, like a clinic somewhere would be doing, uh, or otherwise that clinic would be really going out of business. Uh, <laughs> like they're basically like putting their client's life at risk, risk at some point. And like, especially when we go into the taser part or the kind of the, uh, the cattle prodding like part where I'm like, man, like what if Jacob has like a heart condition? Like, 
are they just gonna be willing to just be like, well, hopefully you don't have a heart attack because I'm you. Uh, <laughs> like, that's the whole thing where, like, man, if someone could have gone in and just, like, been a parent to check up on their kid and, like, seen these, like, taser marks and been like, wow, I'm going to take this to the news <laughs> and see what they have to say about this. Um, but, yeah, so... I'm going to get out of here uh, to call this a wrap. There might be a scene or which I probably forgot about. Let me know in the comments below if there's probably something that I did forget. Whatever. Let me know your thoughts about this movie. You might have probably thought it was weird. You might have thought that uh, that this was like a really dark film, which that's where I kind of, in my mind, went to. Um, but other than that, yeah, just a kind of unique film anyways about like, um, like people that are going through some kind of mental illness, uh, to hopefully, I guess at some point find a cure, whatever cure is to eventually help, uh, these people. Uh, one way or the other. So with that said, I am going to get out of here. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody.